start good morning and welcome back for the next session of today today's last session the session again talks about second year or third year optional papers for this session we have three invited so, dr p d shitore dr mahendra shinde and dr vinod sonone all three sessions will take place immediately let us begin with the session of dr p d shitore i'm privileged to have the honor to invite the first speaker of the second session dr p d shitore from sushila devi deshmukh college latur dr shitore has taken a school in higher education from aurangabad his topic for phd was a stylistic study of john keats selected odes His contribution as a NAC, NAC coordinator of the college is quite significant. He has organized, attended, and presented many papers at national and international level. He was a resource person at several academic places. Sir, we are happy to have you here. So, my dear friends, let us listen to Dr. P. D. Shitore on introduction to speech sounds, <coughs> consonants in English. Sir, please. Thank you, ma'am. respected lokotia ma'am head department of english maharashtra udagiri mahavidyalaya udgi professor dr arvind nawle an old classmate and good friend of mine head department of english shivaji mahavidyalaya udgi professor vinod sonone sir dr mahendra shinde all my friends and students the topic for that has been allotted to me to interact with you people the title of the topic is consonants in english speech sounds consonants in english friends let me take 5 minutes so far as introductory part of this session is concerned so far as phonetics is concerned phonetics is the branch of linguistics and linguistics is a systematic study of language phonetics deals with the production transmission and reception of speech sounds for the production of any sounds for the production of speech sounds there must be a disturbance in the ear we can say this disturbance in the ear has been provided has been provided by such organs of our body and these organs indirectly are called as the organs of speech or the articulators we can say this disturbance in the form of sound waves travels to the ear of the listeners and the listener interprets this wave sound out sound waves as as a sound we can say friends now the point is for the production of any sound whatever it may be either consonant or vowel it needs at least two articulators or two organs of speech at the same time ear not the outer ear but ear inside the lungs that is internal ear we can say indirectly have comes the reference of three systems in english we can say that's the respiratory system phonetory system and articulatory system see respiratory system first respiratory system consists of lungs muscles of chest and windpipe lungs are spongy bodies these lungs are made of small sacs or bags called alveoli it's an alveoli blood is cleaned or purified for the purification of blood as important miss oxygen is important air is supplied to this alveoli by small tubes called bronchioles all these bronchioles come together into two large tubes called bronchi one situated on right and second on the left we can say the bronchi joins the trachea or windpipe and the process is known as respiration 
Respiration is of two types. So one is inspiration and second one is expiration. For the production of any sound, lung air is used. Air yeah, from the lungs is used. There is a reference of pulmonic airstream mechanism. We can see. Pulmonic airstream mechanism, my friends, is of two types. One is pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. And second one is pulmonic inaggressive airstream mechanism. And pulmonic airstream mechanism is used to throw air out. It's called pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. And when pulmonic airstream mechanism is used to throw air out, to, to draw air in, it's called pulmonic inaggressive airstream mechanism. Friends, all sounds are produced either consonants or vowels, monophthongs or diphthongs are produced with pulmonic aggressive as to mechanism. Pulmonic inaggressive as to mechanism is not used in case of speaking or in case of the production of the speech sounds, but pulmonic inaggressive as to mechanism is used in case of yawning and snoring only. So, for the production of sounds, either consonants or vowel, we have one thing in our mind that all sounds are produced with the pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism, means air from the lung is thrown out. Now, friends, the second system that's the important one so far as the study of consonants or vowels is concerned, that's the phonetary system. Phonetary system consists of larynx. Larynx is also known as an Adam's apple. It's situated at the top or at the end of windpipe. In the larynx, there is a pair of lip-like structure. And this pair of lip-like structure is known as ocal cords. These ocal cords are attached in front. They are placed horizontally from front to back. These ocal cords are attached in front and separated at the back. And the opening of the ocal cords is known as glottis. These ocal cords may vibrate or may not. When there is a vibration of ocal cords, sound is known as voiced. When there is no vibration of ocal cords, sound is known as voiceless, we can say. So while dealing with the phonetary system, we are in our mind, there is a reference of three position of the ocal cords, we can say. First is ocal cords that are drawn wide apart. Second one is ocal cords that are held loosely together. And the third one is ocal cords that are held tightly together, we can say. Take the reference of the first position, that is the ocal cords that are wide apart. Ocal cords drawn wide apart. When the ocal cords are drawn wide apart, we can say that remains a wide gap, there, we can say, and this wide opening between them, there is a wide opening between the ocal cords and it's known as a glottis, we can say. Through this ear, through this opening, the ear can pass freely without setting the ocal cords into vibration means when there is, there is no vibration of vocal cord, this sound is known as voiceless, we can say. And this is the, friends, bear in your mind, this is the normal position of the vocal cords during the process of breathing, we can say. The first position of vocal cords that I have discussed, that we have discussed just, that is vocal cords drawn wide apart. When the vocal cords are drawn wide apart, there is a wide opening between them, and this opening is called as glottis, we can say. Through this opening, the ear can pass freely without setting the vocal cords into vibration, we can say. Second position of the vocal cords, is the ocal cords that are held loosely together. When the ocal cords are held loosely together, the ear from the lungs can escape only by setting the ocal cords into vibration. The ocal cords into vibration means in this process there is a vibration of ocal cords. When there is a vibration of ocal cords, indirectly sound is known as a voice to a sense. 
the last position of the ogle cords is ogle cords that are held tightly together when the ogle cords are held tightly together the glottis is closed and therefore no air can escape through it this is the this is the position of the ogle cords that must take place at the time of drinking at the time of eating we can say so that no food or no liquid can enter the wet pipe we can say this is about the phonatory system the most important system that's needed in order to study the consonants or vowels we can say that is the articulatory system friends listen to articulatory system for few minutes we can say articulatory system first one is respiratory system second one is phonatory system and third one is articulatory system through respiratory system what you come to know you come to know that for the production of any sound at least two articulators are important and all sounds are produced with pulmonic egressive airstream mechanism but about the second system we can say in the second system you come to know that consonant or the sounds are either voiced or voiceless sounds are voiced when there is a vibration of vocal cords sounds are voiced when there is no vibration of vocal cords come to articulatory system articulatory system consists of lips group of the mouth and tongue Lips are two in number. One is lower lip, and second one is upper lip. Roof of the mouth consists of upper front teeth, teeth reach, hard palate, soft palate, and ulna. Tongue is divided for our convenience. Tongue is divided into five parts: tip of the tongue, blade of the tongue, front of the tongue, back of the tongue, and root of the tongue. We can see. Now come to the active and passive articulators. We can see lower jaw. that is lower lip and total portion of the tongue are active articulator that is teeth blade front back and root of the tongue so far as so far as roof of the mouth and upper lip or upper jaw is concerned upper jaw is passive articulator articulator exception to this is the soft palate i shall discuss it that then after we can say now so far roof of the mouth is concerned roof of the mouth consists of upper front teeth T three is hard palate, soft palate, and you love we can see. Now, so far as upper front teeth, the part that lies behind the upper front teeth is known as T three is or alveolar is or alveolum. Just behind the T three roof of the mouth becomes hard and bony. This hard and bony structure of the roof of the mouth is known as hard palate. just behind the hard palate roof of the mouth becomes soft and fleshy the soft and fleshy structure of the roof of the mouth is known as soft palate or it's also known as a velum and the last hanging structure of the roof of the mouth is known as ulna friends i have made it clear that lower jaw that is lower lip and total portion of the tongue are active upper jaw that's upper lip and roof of the mouth are passive we can say but to upper jaw the exception is a soft palate listen to soft palate you come to know that the soft palate is the part of the roof of the mouth which lies immediately behind the hard palate it's soft and fleshy structure of the roof of the mouth but it's an active articulator the upper jaw is passive the soft palate is active which soft palate is also known as velum we can say now when the soft palate is raised it touches the back wall of the pharynx when soft palate is raised it touches the back wall of the pharynx so that nasal cavity is closed air from the lungs escapes not through nose or nasal cavity but it escapes through mouth cavity or oral cavity and the sound is known as oral sound but in case of production of certain consonants we can see the soft palate of velum is lowered when the soft palate of velum is lowered it doesn't touch the back wall of the pharynx as it doesn't touch the back wall of the pharynx nasal cavity or nose cavity remains open but at the same time what happens mouth cavity is blocked 
mouth cavity is blocked and air from the lungs escapes not through mouth cavity but escapes through nose or nasal cavity and sound is known as nasal sound so far as english sounds are concerned speech sounds are concerned they are either either oral or nasal there are no nasalized sounds in english but there are certain urdu words in case of production of certain urdu words like ankh and unt we can say what happens soft palate is lower it doesn't touch the back wall of the pharynx so that nasal cavity remains open but at the same time time mouth cavity also remains open air from the lungs is kept simultaneously both through mouth cavity and nasal cavity or nose cavity and oral cavity sounds are described as nasalized sounds we can see there are no nasalized sounds in english either sounds are oral or nasal we can say so friends we I have interacted three systems with you people in fast we can say but come try to understand so far as the first system is concerned be a one thing in your mind from the point of view of examination that that for the production for the production of sound at least two articulators are but essential at the same time lung air is is essential and all sounds are produced with pulmonic aggressive air stream mechanism so for a second system foratory system is concerned we are one thing in your mind that sounds are either voiceless or voiced when there is a vibration of vocal cord sound is known as voiced when there is no vibration of vocal cord sound is known as voiceless so far as this system is concerned the last system articulatory system is concerned be a one thing in your mind that so far as articulatory system is concerned in articulatory system soft palate plays an active role means it can be raised or it can be lowered when it's raised when it's raised sound becomes oral when it's lowered sound becomes nasal we can say now come to the title that is classification of speech sounds friend speech sounds are classified are generally classified into two categories one is consonant and second one is vowel what are consonants what are vowels how to describe consonants how to describe vowel we can say what are consonants what is the definition of consonants what does the term consonant mean listen consonants are those during the production of which or during the articulation of which consonant sounds are those during the production or articulation of which there is a narrow gap there is a narrow gap between the two articulators so that air escapes through mouth with friction opposite to it is a vowel what are vowels how will you define the term vowel vowels are those during the production or articulation of which there is a wide gap between the two articulators so that ear escapes through mouth without friction consonants have friction vowels have no friction consonants are with friction vowels are without friction consonants have friction the reason is that there is a narrow gap between the two articulators vowels don't have friction vowels are without friction because there is a wide gap between them so that ear escapes through mouth without friction vowels have friction no friction consonants have friction consonants are with friction vowels are without friction we can this is the distinction between this is the major difference between the two terms consonants and vowels we can see 
So far as these consonants are concerned, and vowels are concerned, vowels are further classified as front vowels, back vowels, and central vowels. What do front vowels mean? What do back vowels mean? And what do central vowel means? Listen to the definition as you, are, you come to know the distinction between the difference between the two terms, consonants and vowels. These are speech sounds, no doubt. But in case of consonants, in case of consonant, there is a narrow gap between the two articulators. In case of vowels, there is a wide gap between the two articulators. Consonants have friction, vowels have no friction. Consonants are with friction, vowels are without friction. So far, these vowels are concerned. These vowels are further classified as a front vowels, back vowels, and central vowels. So far as front vowel is concerned, front vowels, in case of front vowels, front of the tongue is raised in the direction of hard palate. In case of back vowels, the back of the tongue is raised in the direction of soft palate. In case of central vowel, central vowels, center of the tongue is raised in the direction of the central part of the roof of the mouth. There is no reference of the center of the tongue, but friends, bear in your mind, center of the tongue is the part of the tongue that lies between front of the tongue and back of the tongue, but the central part of the roof of the mouth. There is no reference of the central part of the roof of the mouth so far as roof of the mouth is concerned, but the part that lies between the hard palate and soft palate is known as a central part of the roof of the mouth. So you come to know the definition of consonant, you come to know the definition of vowel. At the same time, you come to know the definition of French vowel, Definition of back vowel and definition of central vowel. So once again, front vowels are those during the production or articulation of which front of the tongue is raised in the direction of heart palate, but there is a wide gap between them. So that here E skips through mouth without friction. Back vowels are those during the production or articulation of which back of the tongue is raised in the direction of soft palate, but there is a wide gap between them. So that here E skips through mouth without friction and central vowels are those during the production or articulation of which center of the tongue, once again, center of the tongue is the part that lies between the front of the tongue and back of the tongue is raised in the direction of the central part of the roof of the mouth. Central part of the roof of the mouth is the part of the roof of the mouth that lies between hard palate and soft palate, we can say. But there is again a wide gap, a sufficient gap between them so that here E skips through mouth without friction, we can say. French vowels are four in number. Central vowels are three in number and back vowels are five in number. All French vowels are unsounded, all central vowels are unsounded. Out of five back vowels, one is unsounded and four are rounded, we can say. Come to the point that is consonants, you have got the definition of consonant. Question is how to describe a consonant. French consonant is described with the help of the following points. First one is Aristotle mechanism, we can say. Second one is position of, position of soft palate. So third one is a vibration or no, uh, that is the place of a position of vocal cords, we can say. Now, so far as for how to describe the consonant, this point is concerned. First one is consonant is described with the help of the following points. The first one is the airstream mechanism. You come to know that so far as the airstream mechanism is concerned, all consonants, all sounds are produced with the pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. The point that I'm talking about is how to describe a consonant. You come to know the definition of term consonant. You also come to know the definition of the term vowel. You also come to know the types of vowel, front vowels, back vowels, center vowel. Now, how to describe a consonant? Consonant is described with the help of the following points. The first one is airstream mechanism. And the answer to this point is that all sounds, all consonants and vowels, all consonants are produced 
with pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism means air is thrown out second one is second one is the vocal cords we can see the vocal cords its place its position indicates whether the sound is voiced or voiceless when the vocal cords are when there is a vibration of vocal cord sound is known as voiced when there is no vibration of vocal cord sound is known as voiceless voiceless sound will be there when the vocal cords are turned wide apart when the vocal cords are turned wide apart the sound there is no vibration of vocal cords and sound that's consonant becomes voiceless second one is voiced when there is a vibration of vocal cords we can say when there is vibration of vocal cords sound is known as voiced vibration of vocal cords takes place vibration of vocal cords takes place when the vocal cords are held loosely together we can say so the consonant either either voiced or voiceless we can say the third point talking about how to describe a consonant first is air stream mechanism second one is vocal cords third one is the position of soft palate so far as the reference of articulated system is concerned position of soft quality indicates whether the sound is nasal or oral we can see sound becomes nasal when when the soft palate is lowered but happens it doesn't touch the back or the pharynx so that nasal cavity remains open but at the same time mouth cavity or oral cavity is closed air from the lungs escapes not through mouth cavity but through nose or nasal cavity sound becomes nasal we can see Position of soft palate also indicates whether it indicates the sound is oral. Sound becomes oral when the sound becomes oral when it's raised. When the soft palate is raised, it touches the back wall of the pharynx so that nasal cavity or nose cavity remains closed. Air from the lungs escapes not through nose or nasal cavity but through mouth or oral cavity. Sound becomes oral. We can say so. how to describe consonant consonant first one is air stream mechanism second one is vocal cords third one is a position of soft palate we can see soft palate indicates soft palate makes it clear whether the sound is position of soft palate makes it clear whether the sound is oral or nasal we can see the fourth point is the structure of articulation or manner of articulation in structure of articulation or manner of articulation there are again the points we'll talk about the first structure that is structure that's plosives weakens what's plosive what is the structure of articulation or manner of articulation sounds which are articulated with the structure of complete closure sudden release sounds which are articulated with the structure of complete closure sudden release are known as plosives there are six plosives in english there are p b t d k g all the sounds are all plosives are oral in means in case of plosives what happens the soft palate is raised soft palate is raised means it touches the back wall of the pharynx so that nasal cavity or nose cavity remains closed but at the same time mouth cavity also remains closed air from the lungs comes out but it's blocked inside the mouth the two articulators which are close to each other separate or go away from each other not slowly but suddenly and air comes out of mouth cavity air comes out of oral cavity with explosive noise we can say all plosives are oral sound there are six plosives in english out of six they are voiceless and three are voiced voiceless plosives are p t and k Voiced plosives are b, d, and g. We can say, Miss Friends, we are talking about the consonant. In consonant, we are talking about how to describe a consonant. In in this point, at this point, there is a sub point that structure of articulation. Under the structure of articulation, there are again sub points. The first structure of manner of articulation is a complete closure and sudden release. We can say, and sounds which are articulated with the structure of complete closure and sudden release are known as plosives. There are six plosives in English. All plosives are oral sounds. We can say. 
come to one rule in case of plosives we can say so far as the pronunciation of past tense maker d or ed is concerned as there is a reference of d as there is a reference of d sound d p b t d k g we can say there is a reference of d we can say how to pronounce pronunciation of past tense maker d or ed so far as d or ed w a n t want w a n t e d ed how to pronounce how to pronounce the past tense maker d or ed remember three rules and i will conclude remember three rules past tense maker d or ed is pronounced either t or d or ed past tense maker d or ed is pronounced either t or d or ed when the root verb ends with voiceless consonant when the root verb ends with voiceless consonant listen to the rule when the root word ends with a voiceless consonant other than t other than t t is also voiced past tense maker do d or ed is pronounced as t okay for example l double o k look is the root word regular form past tense maker d or ed l double o k e d how do how we people pronounce we used to pronounce it as it has looked up but remember the rule the root verb ends with voiceless consonant k p b t d k g k is voiceless what does our rule say if the root word ends with a voiceless consonant past tense maker d or ed is pronounced as t so l double o k e d is not pronounced as looked but it's pronounced as looked it's pronounced as looked second rule if the root word ends with a voiced consonant if the root word ends with a voiced consonant other than d because d is also voiced past tense maker d or ed is pronounced as d l o d g e d lost j is voiced it's followed by past tense maker d or ed it's not pronounced as t but it's pronounced as d so lost what's if the root word ends with t or d if the root word next the last rule we can say if the root word ends with t or d past tense may network problem at w a n t e d so far as this particular word is concerned it ends with the t as wanted we can so lighter fluctuation is being observed at your end dr chitore Doctor Shitore, you are not audible. I think that the network is being fluctuated at your end. I think, uh, Doctor Lakutia, ma'am. I, I think that. Uh, Uh, there is a network problem and that's why uh, dr shitori is not able to connect with you he will rejoin uh, we will wait for a couple of minutes but i will call him
डॉक्टर शीतो है कैरी ऑन या नेटवर्क फ्लक्चुएशन होते कैरी ऑन प्लीज कैरी ऑन योर योर टॉपिक गो गो टू कंक्लूजन एंड कैरी ऑन देयर वाज नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम एट योर एंड ओके 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 नो प्रॉब्लम यू कैरी ऑन सो फॉर ओके सो फॉर एज the rule is concern you come to know so far as past tense maker d or t d or ed is concerned sounds are described as the verbs are pronounced as t d or ed we can say so far as the second structure of articulation or manner of articulation is concerned the second structure manner of articulation is complete closure and slow release so far as this structure of articulation or manner of articulation is concerned idea is but clear to you that sounds which are articulated with a structure of complete closure and slow release are known as affricates we can say sounds which are articulated with a structure of complete closure and sudden release are known as plosives sounds which are articulated with a structure of complete closure and slow release are known as affricate you know that there are two affricates in english that's which i am sure we can say so far as these affricates are concerned all these affricates are oral means in case of production of a pronunciation or art articulation of affricate sounds are concerned the soft palate is raised so that it touches the back wall of the pharynx so that nasal cavity is closed air from the lungs escapes not through nose or nasal cavity but through mouth cavity or oral cavity friends what's the difference between plosives and affricates so far as the difference between plosives and affricates are concerned all these are plosives are oral affricates are oral but in case of oral in case of plosives we can say air that's blocked inside the mouth comes out of mouth with explosive noise as the two articulators which are close to each other means in case of plosives there is a or there is a close contact or firm contact or tight contact between the two articulators so that ear these two articulators separate to go away from each other not suddenly not slowly but suddenly but in case of affricate so far affricates are concerned the the articulators are close to each other there is a close contact firm contact or tight contact between them but so far as the separation is concerned these two articulators which are close to each other these two articulators separate or go away from each other not suddenly but slowly in case of plosives the two articulators go from go away from each other separate from each other not slowly but suddenly in case of affricates these two articulators go away or separate from each other not suddenly but slowly we can say affricates are oral plosives are oral affricates in case of affricates the soft palate is raised in case of plosives the soft palate is also raised that friends there are two two only two affricates in english that's ch and ch the third structure of manner of articulation so far as the title how to describe a consonant is concerned the third structure of articulation or manner of articulation is close approximation so the definition will be sounds which are articulated with the structure of close approximation are known as fricatives there are nine fricatives in english all fricatives are also oral sound mean in case of fricatives also the soft palate is raised soft palate is raised means it touches the back wall of the pharynx nasal cavity remains closed the air from the lungs escapes not through mouth not through nose or nasal cavity but through mouth cavity all fricatives are also oral oral sounds we can say there are nine fricatives in english there are six plosives in english there are two affricates in english there are nine fricatives in english there are four wa sa da sa za sh j ha so there is again there is again a rule we can say pronunciation of the suffixes s or e s we can say pronunciation of suffixes s or e s suffixes s or e s is pronounced either as s z or is 
so far as the rule past tense maker d or ed is concerned you come to know that the past tense maker d or ed is pronounced as t d or ed in the same manner how to pronounce the how to pronounce s or es we can see suffix is s or es suffix is s or es is pronounced as s z or is when to pronounce when to pronounce z and when to pronounce is we can see if the word if the word not the verb if the word ends uh, with voiceless consonants other than s sh and ch if the word ends uh, with a voiceless consonant other than s sh and ch suffixes s or es is pronounced as s second one is if the word if the root word ends uh, with a voiced consonant and vowels other than z j and ch suffixes s or es is pronounced as z if the root word ends with either s z ch j sh j suffixes s or es is pronounced as is for example t o u c h e s for example the word t o u c h e s the root word is t o u c h it ends with the ch followed by s or es es followed by es we can say so instead of pronouncing the word t o u c h e s as touches it's pronounced as touches we can say bench benches class classes pass passes garage garages bush bushes push pushes church churches teach teaches so far as the sake this is the last rule say for so far as the second rule is concerned if the root word ends with a voiced consonant and vowels other than z j and j suffixes s or es is pronounced as z for example suppose the word e and d is concerned this particular word ends e and d ends with the d e n d s root word ends with d we can say so far as the sound t is concerned it's voiced followed by s so s is not pronounced as s s is pronounced as z so e n d s will be pronounced as ends G I R L S will be pronounced as girls. G I R L S girls we can say. P E N S pens we can say. And the first one we can say, if the root word ends with a voice, voiceless consonant other than s, sh, and ch, suffixes s or s is pronounced as s we can say. For example, P U T S puts. as so far as the root word is concerned p u t it ends with voiceless consonant if voiceless consonant is there s is pronounced as s if voiced consonant vowels are there exception you know it very well if voiced consonant and vowels are there it's pronounced as z b u l b s bulbs b u l b s bulbs bulbs girls learns l e a r n s learns not learns no is voiced sound we can say as there is a vibration of vocal cords so s is pronounced as z we can say not learns learns we can say. studies studies so far as the last rule is concerned once again if the root word ends with a voice ends with the sir sir ch 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 j suffixes s or es is pronounced as is we can say you know it touches catches roses this is about the third structure of manner of articulation that is close approximation 
there is there are again such certain structures of articulation or manner of articulation followed by place of articulation then the uh, then other is the vowels back vowels front vowels central vowels close vowel open vowel half close vowel half open vowel but it needs time we can say thank you friends thanks arvin thanks ma'am for a very praiseworthy activity that you was you people have started it said that money never starts an idea but ideas start money we can say very, very as a bright people i feel very uh, happy today as i have been in the company of the giants we can say good people and one philosopher says a company of good people is as good as visiting the shop of perfume whether you buy it or not you are bound to receive the fragrance the fragrance of both the colleges and both the heads as everywhere we can say thank you thank you once again thanks ma'am thanks thank arvin uh, dr lokotia ma'am dr lokotia ma'am i would like to bring to your kind notice one thing not only to you but all the participants dr pd sutra remain remain online i think yes yes i'm online dr uh, Pandoran Shitore is my classmate. This is not uh, I am uh, saying here. I, my emphasis is there that uh, he secured a 99 or 98. I am not sure, but not less than 98. 99 marks in this this paper, modern structure, uh, at a uh, in Dayanand Arts College, MA, and he bagged the first prize uh, of the university. And uh, it it was evident uh, through his each and every word. Okay, how. expert he is i am reminding our teacher dr mrs bhargav ma'am who taught us just uh, uh, i i saw I, i have observed today just the xerox copy just as it is uh, the uh, pronunciations uh, through the mouth as like uh, dr uh, mrs uh, bhargav ma'am's uh, wise uh, yeah, yeah. male origin is was coming out from uh, was being articulated from uh, dr pandushan i am proud of him and his scholarship in uh, this field uh, of structure mind blowing speech by him uh, over to uh, dr lokotia and just i was about i was desirous to share this news to the students that they should uh, inspire because uh, okay, okay. while introducing him uh, I, this was this thing was not introduced the taking 99 marks is uh, not not an ordinary person salute to you pandu though you are my <laughs> classmate for your scholarship and to this speech no any really class or dr nagri <laughs> So thank you very much for your extraordinary it was, it was really mind blowing it was an excellent and engaging presentation and that would really reach the students and help them in their mcq pattern because it was very very well tailored speech very nice thank you very much sir thank you uh, thank you yes yeah. now we come to the next speaker uh, eminent speaker dr mahendra shinde first let me uh, congratulate him because he has recently been appointed as the vice principal of the college newton college uh, selu and he is also the head of the department with a doctoral degree he too has been invited at several places for national and international conferences as resource persons he has attended organized many conferences and he is a man of fanatics so let us keep your ears and eyes keen on the speaker listen to dr mahendra shinde his topic is english phonetics sir please thank you ma'am uh i suppose i'm uh, audible to all of you can you listen me well well, en well enough yeah. all of you audible shito shitole and uh, now listen sir can you listen me well yes doctor can... mahendra you are doc you are doctor you are visible properly you are audible properly carry on your okay okay thank you first of all i would like to thank uh, professor nowle professor lakotia madam and uh, professor shitole and everybody who is who, who were responsible to say conduct this very very meaningful activity and i suppose it was very very essential in uh, the days like these uh, where the whole world is uh, seriously jolted by the corona pandemic see uh, teaching online or, or lecturing online is uh, something not very new to 
not just me but everybody but uh, the this particular situation has uh, say forced us to go online and i suppose such lectures uh, would be very very helpful to most people and particularly the students see after such a wonderful speech by dr pandurang shitole see i am at loss as to uh, what should i take up but still i suppose i would just say a few things about phonetics uh, which would be very very general and uh, in some other lecture i would like to go for some other uh, subject see uh first of all see uh we must ask ourselves we must ask our students one particular question that why we fail to understand the native english why we fail to understand when the english people or american people speak and because we are not familiar with uh, their um, particular pronunciations of consonants and vowels we are not familiar with their stress patterns we are not familiar with their intonation pattern and so we fail to understand see one simple example might uh, might elaborate might explain uh, the thing i think in a very very suitable manner for example for example one simple word star s t a r the word is the word comprises just of four letters s t a r we speakers say we pronounce it as star as marathi speakers we pronounce it as star but how english people pronounce it they pronounce it as star something like maybe i myself would not be able to pronounce the way american people or english people do but still i will try see they call it star so what is the difference the sa is common in english and uh, in marathi as well because sa is a shared consonant then comes the t i think i am making sense i hope then comes t in Mar marathi t is different in marathi t our tongue touches the hard palate and so the marathi t is a little harsh a little hard while in english t the tongue tip touches the alveolar region so it is so it is t t number 3 speech sound is a in marathi we have a but in english we do not have a what we have in english is a we have a longer version of a a and the fourth speech sound is r which again is quite different uh, from the way uh, we speak it normally uh, in influenced by our marathi speech sounds we call it r as in tarbuz tarbuz rakar r but in english it is very softly spoken it is very softly pronounced it is said as r r with rounded tip of the tongue so the whole thing becomes the whole thing becomes star so it is just about one single very very tiny word like star where we fail to understand the actual pronunciation and when there are words and words there are sentences sentences there is stress patterns and there are pronunciation patterns there are pronunciation patterns so many things become quite very difficult to understand or gauge uh, the non native speakers and that is why that is why i suppose we fail to understand the english pronunciation or american pronunciation many times people raise the question as to should we follow rp or not why should not we speak english as we speak our marathi language or whenever whenever somebody tries to speak english language the english way 
as Shitole does or many of our, our friends do, see, people find it quite dramatic. Some people find it quite very dramatic. But I suppose we must follow English pronunciation without fail. At least we must try to understand, we must try to copy, we must try to follow the English pronunciation. Because, because how do we get, how do we feel, how do we appreciate Marathi being spoken speaker? How do we appreciate, how do we like it when Kannada speakers speak Marathi? And I suppose we never appreciate it. We never like the pronunciation of, uh, Marathi, uh, of Marathi spoken by the Kannada speakers. We never appreciate it. Marathi people never appreciate the English of uh, one uh, Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Deve Gora. So, a language must be spoken in a very, very native manner. Because when people come together from different Network fluctuation yes. at Dr. Mahindra Shinde's end. Shall we call him, sir? Uh, no, we will wait because I think that he's joining. He is rejoining. Where Dr. Shitoe has put the uh, adult screen. I'm calling him. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 He told that if the same problem is being faced by him, then better to call Dr. Sonone and whenever network will come, he will come and he will rejoin and he will put the concise summary of his talk. Dr. Sonone, call to Dr. Sonone. Yes. No? Uh, let us, yeah. Because of some uh, fluctuating uh, bandwidth and some fluctuating network problem, uh, we have to give a pause to Dr. Shinde's uh, talk and we will resume once he gets that network. Uh, let us come to the third session. And uh, the third session will be taken by Dr. Vinod Sononi from Shiv Jagriti College, Nayagao. He will uh, address us for skill enhancement course. And this paper, uh, he will talk on acquisition of civic skills and social responsibility as a part of life skills. He is the head of the department. He has worked on the fictional world of Chetan Bhagat for his doctoral degree. He is also the recipient of Mallikarjun Rao Memorial Award. And here we are with this topic, acquisition of civic skills and social responsibility as a part of life skills. Dr. Sonone, please start. Thank you, madam. Uh, first of all, I must extend my gratitude towards Dr. Nowle, sir, who is my research guide. Under his guidance, I have completed my PhD. Then 
I must be thankful to Dr. Smita Nagari Madam and all the members of uh, organizing committee of this program. The topic that is alerted to me is acquisition of civic skills and social responsibility as a part of life skills. Uh, before starting uh, my topic, uh, friends, uh, let me share uh, my PPT uh, with you uh, because this PPT will be definitely uh, helpful uh, to you also. Uh, no, less, sir. Yes. I'm not, uh, I'm not able to share my PPT. Yes, I'm, I'm giving privilege to you. Yes, sir. Yes, I have given privilege to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. You, you will be able to share PPT. Now you are uh, co-host along with ma'am. Within, within some seconds, I will uh, okay. share my PPT with the students. It too has network problem. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm. I'm trying, sir. Yes, it is done, sir. Within the seconds, I will. No problem. Yes. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. So, friends, good afternoon to all of you. Myself, Dr. Vinod Sonwani. I am working as an assistant professor and head of English department at Shiva Jagriti College, Naregao. And the topic is given to me is acquisition of civic skills and social responsibility as a part of life skills. As you know that uh, for the students of uh, BA third year, uh, in a skills paper, uh, we have life skill first and life skill second. In the fifth semester, we have the paper called life skills first. As you know that uh, Swami Ramanan Tirth Marathwara University has uh, prescribed the skill paper from the academic year 2017 and 18. For the first time, this paper was prescribed only for the student of BA second year. And from 2018 and 19, this paper is also prescribed for the students of uh, BA third year also. So in the last year, you have studied the skills for employability, the skills which are required to get the employment. Last year, you have studied. And this year, you have to study the life skills the skills which are really helpful for the development of your life. So definitely for the development of the life, these skills will be uh, useful to you. So uh, let me introduce today's topic, acquisition of civil skills and social responsibility as a part of life skills. Mm -hmm. Friends, every individual needs for the development of his life, three things, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And combinedly, we can call these three things as the competencies. Hello. These are the competencies which are really required for uh, the so development. Online, I'm for, uh, the development for the development of human beings. Collectively, we can call these three things as the competencies. Now, why we need these three things? These three things are required for the personal fulfillment and development, for active citizenship, for social inclusion and employment. So without having these competencies, it is not possible for us to get the personal fulfillment and development 
to have to have to have citizenship to have social inclusion okay. and to get the employment so you know that friends, social inclusion is very important for us as the great greek master aristotle and the great philosopher has said that by nature man is a social animal so as we are the social animals so definitely we need social inclusion and for that these competencies are very important knowledge is important skills are important at the same time attitudes to the particular contexts are also very uh, important now friends uh, let me introduce you what is meant by civic skills the skills are related to citizen or citizenship to be the good citizen of the nation civic skills are important and we can say that the civic skills are the component of the competencies now recently we have discussed the three competencies we have discussed about knowledge we have discussed about the skills and we have also discussed about the attitudes and civic skills are the components are one of the components of these uh, competencies so we can say that to get the civic skills to be expert in the civic skills we need these competencies we need the knowledge we need the skills and we need the attitudes to the particular context so at first we should know that which skills you have to acquire which things you need to get the civic skills so civic skills contain now one by one we have to uh, discuss about the civic skills and we have to discuss about the things which are required to develop the civic skills so friends first of all we have to discuss that which civic skills are important or which things are contained in the civic skills the first important thing is that personal communication skills now you are the students of literature you are the students of english language and the students of literature and language know that what is the importance of the communication skills communication skills are not important only for the students of literature and for the students of language but personal communication skills are also important to become the good citizen to become the good citizen now you will say that how it's possible uh, how we can be the good citizen by developing the personal communication skills for that you should know that when you want to become the good citizen at that time you have to persuade the minds of other people you have to make clear your points with mm. other people suppose you have some good ideas then you can communicate with others you are the good citizen with the ideas with your good ideas you can make others also as the good citizens so to persuade the minds of the people to share your good ideas your good views with others definitely personal communication skills are very important so these things are included in the civic skills civic skills is a broad term and there are so many uh, sub themes sub points are there which we have to discuss which we have to acquire so without acquiring the personal communication skills it is i think it is not possible uh, for any person uh, to become the good citizen to acquire the uh, civic skills now the the main point is that why we are discussing all these things why we have to learn the civic skills because you are the students of ba third year now and uh, you mm -hmm. are the voter also you are the citizen of india also you are the voter you have got the right of voting and you are the citizen uh, citizen of india and being the citizen of india you should know that what are the civic skills and what are the duties and responsibilities of the citizen you are now the responsible citizen you are educated and being the educated person you should know that what are the civic skills and how to acquire the civic skills and what are the benefits of uh, these civic skills so uh, just we have discussed the point 
the importance of personal communication skills uh, to become the good citizen later on uh, we have to acquire knowledge and awareness of political system now as we are the citizen as we are the author definitely it is our responsibility that we should have the knowledge and awareness of political system also as we know that india is a democratic nation and what kind of political system is there in india we should know we should know that what is meant by lok sabha we should know that what is meant by rajya sabha how the mps of lok sabha are elected how the mps of uh, rajya sabha are elected what is vidhan sabha what is vidhan parishad what is meant by jilla parishad what is meant by panchayat samiti what is meant by gram panchayat how the members of all these uh, 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 things are uh, elected so it is the basic requirement for all the citizens that we should have the knowledge and awareness of political system then only we can know that what is the value of your votes and how to elect your mps your uh, mlas okay or representatives of other organizations so the th second thing that contains in the civic skills is knowledge and awareness of political system without the knowledge and awareness of political system i think you cannot be the uh, good citizen then uh, you have to uh, improve the ability to think critically about our civic and political roles and responsibilities we think we are the human beings and we think but only thinking is not important i think thinking critically is more important as we are educated or as we are adult as we are the authors at that time and when we are uh, involving ourselves in the civic engagement at that time definitely we have to develop the critical thinking without critical thinking or without the development of the critical thinking it is not possible for us uh, to know that what are our civic and political roles and responsibilities the constitution of india has discussed has presented what are the civic roles and responsibilities of the indian citizens and to play these civic roles and political roles and responsibilities we have to at first develop ability to think critically without critical thinking it is not possible for us to take the correct decision suppose elections are there and we have to vote Uh, the candidate at that time we sh should not be emotional we should not think the caste of the candidate we should not think his religion we should think critically when we are voting and without this ability i think we will not uh, participate uh, in this uh, political system and uh, we cannot become the great author the great citizen and we cannot uh, elect the correct person for us the correct leader for us so friends these are the three things which are contained in the civic skills civic skills it, it is the broad term and these three things are included these three things are contained in the path of acquiring the civic skills personal communication skills are required knowledge and awareness of political system is also very essential at the same time you have to develop your ability to think critically about your civic and political roles and responsibilities sometimes uh, what happens we are aware about our rights but we are not aware about our responsibilities and our roles so it is very essential for the citizen of india to know what are the civic roles and what are the political responsibilities of the citizens so these things are very important to acquire by each and every citizen of india as you are the student of uh, ba third year and uh, it is possible that you might have uh, acquired some of the uh, basic points of uh, the civic skills and if you have not acquired it now i think it is the right time to acquire these things to make yourself as the good citizen as 
the responsible citizen of India. Okay. Now the next point I have to discuss is the important aspects of civic engagement. Now we have to engage ourselves in uh, civic activities. We cannot say that though I am the citizen of uh, India, though I am the author, I have nothing to do with politics. I have nothing to do with the government and elections and etc. As you are the author, you have got the right to vote. You are the citizen of India. At that time, you have to engage yourself in the civic activities. But it is not easy to engage yourselves in the civic activities. Because when you have to engage yourself in the civic uh, activities at that time, certain things are required. Some basic knowledge is required. Without the basic knowledge, you are not able uh, to engage yourself in the civic activities. Now, which, is, uh, which things are uh, required for the engagement in civic activities? The first requirement from the citizen of India is civic knowledge, basic civic knowledge. And uh, uh, this knowledge you will get from your uh, school lessons, for, from your uh, college uh, lessons, from political science subject from your uh, uh, public administration at the same time from newspapers you can get the knowledge uh, we uh, we uh, we may know that there are some people who are not educated enough but they have the knowledge of civic engagement they have the knowledge especially in the villages there are some senior people and uh, who are not educated but they have knowledge of political system they have knowledge of structure of the government they know their responsibilities. It means this is the subject which uh, is taught in the schools and colleges also, and it can be acquired without going to schools and colleges. Also. There's no need to go to school and college uh, to acquire the knowledge about uh, civic engagement. But still, you should get the knowledge, whatever may be the source of the knowledge. You get it from your schools and colleges, you get from the reading the books, or by experience of the life also, you can get the knowledge of uh, civic engagement. So let us see that which knowledge uh, each and every citizen needs to become the good citizen. Now, the knowledge of basic concepts. What we need, we need, we require the knowledge of basic concepts. Now, which are the basic uh, concepts uh, for the civic engagement? The most important and basic concept is democracy. The concept of democracy. You should know that. As uh, we know that we are living in democratic nation, India is the democratic nation and uh, being the citizen of a democratic nation, we should know that what is meant by democracy. And when there is a, a mention of a democracy, definitely uh, we should know the most popular definition of democracy made by Abraham Lincoln, the former uh, president of America. And he said that government of the people, by the people and for the people. Yes. What is meant by democracy? Government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It is the most popular definition made by Abraham Lincoln. And it is known uh, to most of the people of the world, those who, those who are educated, uh, they know this uh, definition. And only educated people should know the democracy. It is not the matter. The people, those who are not educated, the people, those who have not heard the name of Abraham Lincoln, the people, those who have not heard the definition made by Abraham Lincoln, they should also know that what is meant by democracy. So this is the basic concept. Democracy. What is meant by democracy? We should know. It is the government of the people. It is the government by the people. And it is the government for the people. Though the democracy seems very, uh, very simple, but you should know that it is the most challenging form of government. Democracy is not simple. It is the most challenging form of government. There are so many uh, limitations for the government, for the political leaders, where they are in democracy, because they have to think only for the people, only for the people. The decision should be taken in the favor of the common people. And at that time, there are so many limitations. There are so many rules and regulations made by the constitutions which the political leaders 
the ministers and the prime ministers they have to follow so it is most challenging form of government and it is the duty of the citizens of india that they should know what is been by democracy after that a uh, second thing uh, we should know is individual and collective rights individual and collective rights now uh, as we know that uh, in india the government runs according to the provisions made in uh, the constitution of india and when there is a discussion about individual and collective rights we should know that uh, in the constitution in part 3 there is provision of individual and collective rights so there are so many i think there are six rights there are six uh, individual rights which are conferred by the constitution of india to each and every citizen of india and being a citizen of india we should know that what are my rights as the citizen of india now let us uh, discuss what are the rights given by uh, the constitution of india to us in the third part of constitution six rights are there one is right to equality we are all equal whatever be may be our background cultural background social background or economical background we are equal all citizens of india are equal because this equality is conferred by the by the constitution of india second right is right to freedom third is right against exploitation anyone cannot exploit you as you are equal anyone has no right to exploit you then fourth one is right to freedom of religion you have the right to accept to choose any religion because we know that in india is the only country where the people of all religions live because freedom is there freedom is there as we know that pakistan is muslim country but in india the people of all the religions live because there is choice there is freedom of choosing the religion the fifth right is cultural and educational right and the last one is right to constitutional remedies whatever remedies are provided by the constitution each and every person has the right to get the benefit provided by the remedy of the constitution so in this way these are the six rights uh, which are confirmed uh, by the constitution of india to each and every citizen of india so as we are discussing about the civic engagement we have to engage ourselves in the civic activities at that time we should have this knowledge this civic knowledge we need without this basic civic knowledge i think it is not possible for us to engage ourselves Uh, in the civic engagement in the civic activities and uh, to make us as the good and responsible citizen of india now let us uh, move towards the second uh, requirement second is requirement is civic we have about the civic skills also network problem ha network fluctuation problem he is he belongs to remote area yeah. and his college is far uh, a bit yeah. far away from, away from uh, that tower uh, we will uh, ma'am just conclude uh, 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 yeah one minute uh, uh, i request uh, dr shinde to enable his video his video is enabled but he is i, I, I will call him uh, last concluding session you wind up Uh, sir may i conclude 
you conclude i will call the uh, yes sir yes sir i think there is a network problem and uh, i am not audible and visible also i think no you audible so i am told uh, to conclude uh, my speech so friends as we were discussing about the uh, acquisition of uh, civic skills and social responsibility as you are the students of ba third year and to be the good citizen uh, you have to acquire these <coughs> skills uh, which we discussed here uh, once again i extend my gratitude towards dr nawale <coughs> sir uh, towards uh, lakhotia madam dr mane sir dr kamlakar gawani sir and all the members of organizing committee for invited me as the speaker uh or uh, as uh on the topic acquisition of civil skills and social responsibility as a part of life skills thank you sir thank you ma'am once again thank you sir. thank you very much sir uh, now let us conclude the session and so is it okay now listen yes 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 now because i talked to uh, dr mahendra sir also Uh, he yes. is trying his level best uh, to join and uh, to present for uh, out of thanks even, but uh, problem of network is there. Even uh, in case of Dr. Vinod, the same problem is there. Uh, better yeah. to conclude. Uh, we, we are thankful to all of them, and uh, better to close the session uh, with a note that uh, uh, we will meet again tomorrow at the given time at ten uh, sharp. Concluding with single yes. line. Yes. Uh, first of all, let me um, thank. <coughs> Express my gratitude towards Dr. P. D. Shitole. He, I am really speechless because of his articulate and impressive uh, presentation. It was an excellent presentation. Uh, he was to be present here, but because of some unavoidable work, he left. And so uh, I thank him again, Dr. Mahendra Shinde. Also, sir, you tried a lot. Uh, your scholarly talk was uh, about to continue, but because of the fluctuation of your network problem, you couldn't. And I hope we meet you tomorrow also. Uh, sorry for that, Dr. Vinod Sononi. Also, you were you have given a wonderful PPT presentation uh, to the students of SCC. And uh, again, the problem of fluctuation regarding uh, bandwidth was there, but still uh, the students could listen to you and get you. So. once again i thank all the three uh, speakers and uh, express my gratitude towards your sparing of time and i hope that you will join the coming sessions also for the next 3 days and i end and conclude the session for today thank you very much over to dr navlesa yes ma'am